this video, I would like to tell you a true story about a realization that I've had, or an insight, recently, in my own life, that while at first parents may not seem to have very much to do with my normal topic range of foreign languages and their study, does, I believe, have a great deal of application to the areas of awareness and attitude, which are very important attributes in, in our overall effective study. So, this is a story that I will call the Parable of the Razor, and it does have to do with shaving one's face. So it's something that uh, men will be able to relate to directly, and perhaps even get some practical benefit from, whereas uh, women will not, but I think they will have no problem at all getting the point, getting the message, uh, learning the lesson if there is one, and they will probably likely be able to find parallels and analogies in their own lives. So, um, it has to do with shaving one's face, and I am now going on 45, and if my memory serves me correctly, I began shaving when I was going on 15, so that's 30 years. 30 years I've been shaving, and while I know some men who only shave uh, because they have to, and they view it as a chore, and they feel obliged to shave to go into the office on weekdays, but they won't shave on weekends or on, on holidays, and uh, they basically don't like it, whereas I, I, I have to say I do. I, I rather like shaving. I don't know why I'm so constituted, but I really hate the feeling of, of stubble on my chin, and I like the feeling of smoothness, and therefore, although while once or twice a year when I'm sick or on a camping trip, I, I might miss shaving. Basically, I shave once a day, every single day, for 30 years times 365 days. That's 10,000 times, 10,000 times plus that I have shaved, done something that I liked and tried to do well. Uh, how did I try to do it well? Well, for the most part, all that I did is I tried to be sure that I kept up with the latest innovations, that I used the uh, the newest razor, the best razor, the, the, the one that uh, was the most improved, the most scientific, the most up-to-date. Uh, when I started shaving, razors were kind of like this. They were just uh, two blades fixed in plastic, and that was it. Um, and since then, every two or three years, every couple of years, there has been an innovation that's been heralded, and something has been done to the, the set of these blades, uh, if I recall correctly. First, somehow, they actually went back and forth in their setting, and then the setting itself would pivot, and uh, then the setting became flexible, uh, and then there was some sort of mesh or net put over the setting so that you were even less likely to cut yourself, and then there were uh, strips, lubricating strips, various kinds of uh, medication were put on here. And all that was with two blades. Uh, these were all two-bladed razors, um, different ones. And then they came to a period when they put not just two, but three blades with all those same differentiations, flexing and, and whatnot. Um, and then they got to four blades and, and five. and. Uh, I don't know where they are now. Uh, it continues, and the interesting thing with each of these uh, innovations is that they are not at all interchangeable. Once a change has been made, you have to switch over and, and buy the new packet of type blades. They don't fit on the earlier ones, and um, with each improvement, you have to pay consequently in price, so that for a five-bladed razor, you might be paying $5 per cartridge now. Um, and as I said, I, I like to shave, so I've always been eagerly waiting for uh, uh, the, the, the new blade to appear on the market. And when it comes out, attuned to the, uh, the publicity and seeing the commercials or the, the packaging that uh, shows a graphic of the way that the new blade will cut the hair at the right angle when it's coming out. And um, I've been excited, and I've bought it, and I've used it. And whenever I've gotten a new type of blade compared to the older one, um, I've always felt uh, as soon as I got it, wow, they've really done it that time. I mean, I really have felt 
grateful to these engineers at, at Gillette or Schick or, or whatnot for spending their time really working to make improvements in my life so that I could shave better and closer and uh, more easily. But I have to say, I, I have given pause to the fact that, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, I was not slovenly. Um, I don't cut myself uh, any less frequently now than I did then. It's not any easier now than it is then. Um, are there any real improvements in this? I, it's, it's hard to really point to them and, and to what the, they might be. One reason I've believed in improvements is because I have always had, by inclination, a disposition to like to collect nice old things. So I happen to have had um, uh, things like uh, this old straight razor um, and this old double-edged razor. And when I've tried to shave with these things, I've butchered myself, uh, whereas I haven't butchered myself with any of, of these things. Now, obviously, something like this is something that you, you, you really could uh, slit your throat with or take off your nose or your ear or give yourself a, a cheek-to-jaw scar worthy of uh, the kind of things that were supposed to be fashionable in the Prussian officer corps. And this kind of thing, though, is a lifetime instrument. You bought one of these, and this is all that men could use for thousands of years, something like this. You would have it for your whole life unless you lost it or broke it somehow. Um, and this kind of thing that came out right at the turn of the 20th century, uh, on the one hand, did really change things and make it possible for you to shave yourself, uh, put a lot of barbers out of business, I'm sure. Um, uh, you can still, with one of these blades that are wrapped in paper, if you take the blade itself, I suppose you, you could commit suicide with it or uh, do something like that, but used uh, as intended as it is here, you, you, can, you can nick yourself, but you can't really injure yourself with this. That's why they call this a safety razor. And this, I think, was uh, all that there was for people to use for about 60 years, but as I said, when I tried to use one of these things, having grown up with these things, I, I butchered myself. So I assumed that these were better than that. Um, but I have to say, in all this time of shaving, all that I relied upon was the instrument itself. I didn't give much thought to the technique or to the circumstances with which I used it. In terms of how you would shave, I suppose in the back of my head, I always I uh, had heard that you were supposed to shave after you got out of the shower. Showering would uh, soften up your beard and, and make it somehow easier to shave. Um, but I actually, when as long as I use these kind of things, I, I never really noticed any difference. And so if you have to make a choice, this is a man's morning routine, shave and shower, shower or shave. If you're in a busy bathroom, uh, you have to uh, be flexible and work around what other people are doing. But if you can fall into your own routine, as I said, for uh, the back of my consciousness, of I should shave, shower first and then it'll be easier to shave, but it doesn't really make it any easier. And, well, when you get out of the shower and you're, you're trying to shave right away, the, the mirror is all fogged up. And while it, it might be nice to be naked and, and wet when the weather is warm, um, when it's at all chilly or drafty, it's nicer to dry off and, and get dressed first. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be any real advantage there. And in point of fact, uh, if you are shaving with whatever blade, even the five blade Mach 5 or something like that, from time to time you are going to nick your neck. And when you do that, uh, Murphy's Law really has a way of kicking in. If you just shave and then go get dressed right away and you're putting on a shirt with your tying your tie, by the time you put your collar back down, you'll have little red blood stains on your shirt. Inevitably on a day when you don't have a spare and you're in a big hurry to go to somewhere to make a, a nice impression. So uh, if you do happen to nick yourself and then you get in the shower, well, by the time you've washed it off and dried it off, uh, it, it won't be bleeding as much. So there's some advantages to uh, showering first and then shaving. 
Uh, and furthermore, with these kinds of razors, all of these, uh, they are basically designed so that you want to use some force. You want to press hard on your face to do that. And I just happened to come across recently an article about the phenomenon of wet shaving, which sounds kind of funny because that's all that I've ever done. An electric razor just doesn't do it. Um, but wet shaving, referring to using one of these utensils the way they were intended to be used. Now again, this, this, this requires real skill, so we'll leave that aside. But something like this, it turns out that, uh, yes, it does make a real difference. Softening your beard by showering first uh, will make that work a lot better. And then furthermore, that whereas with these, while you want to press hard on your face, with these kind of tools, you don't press at all. You don't use any pressure in the slightest. You just let the weight of the instrument itself carry itself across your face. And it turns out that if you do these two things, if you take a shower first and then just let this glide over your face, that this will give you a much better, much closer shave than this. With this, you are much less likely to cut yourself than this. And with this, with these little packets of blades, depending on, on the brand or where you buy them or what quantity you buy them, uh, these kinds of things now, as I said, these can be $5 a blade. These are going to be $0.05 cents a blade. It's an incredible difference. So the realization that I came to is that all this time I have believed in innovation and progress, sort of rather blindly, just looking to the utensil, to the instrument itself, and not paying any attention to technique or the circumstances under which is I would use something. So <clears throat> the practical moral for this, as I just said, if you happen to be a man who shaves, uh, you might want to look into everything that I've just talked about. Go read up on something on wet shaving, and you might just find that if you use this rather than this, you'll save a great deal of money and you'll make a much less of an environmental footprint behind you and you will not be uh, deceived into believing something that uh, is, is not true. Which is the first feeling or impulse that I had after I realized this is that it's rather strange. I've been shaving for 30 years, uh, 30 times uh, 365, that's 10,000 plus times. 10,000 times, uh, in East Asian thought, 10,000 is, 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 is a basic unit of counting. And it, 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 that would, and that seemed to be enough to make you a master, to make you know how to do what you're doing. 10,000 times. I, I don't spend, I think I'm like, I don't spend a lot of time looking in a mirror. Uh, I might check uh, my appearance a couple of seconds here and there uh, throughout the course of a day, but the time that I spend looking directly at my own face, looking in a mirror, is almost all due to shaving. So my entire adult life, 10,000 times, all the times that I've looked at myself thinking that I knew what I was doing, I didn't. I was doing it slightly wrong, or I wasn't doing it right. I mean, all of this could lead you to um, a rather sort of devastating sense of doubt. Uh, what do I do if I can't do something like this, a basic function? How do I even know that I walk right? Well, talk to some chiropractors, talk to some uh, uh, all sorts of physical fitness experts and the like. Most people do have bad posture. <sighs> rather than letting this get you down, though, and uh, sort of uh, being devastating in this fashion, making you doubt everything that you do, I think you can take this lesson that I've learned completely in the reverse way and use it to overturn some basic phrases. You, you can teach an old dog new tricks. It's not too late to learn. Better late than never. All these kinds of things. So yes, as I said at the beginning of this video, this might not seem to have very much to do with language learning, but in point of fact, I think that it does. Because uh, if you have watched the one of the series on the playlists that I've made, 
of a series of reviews of language learning materials, well, people who go out to buy language learning materials find themselves very much in the same boat as people who go out to buy razors. If you go out to a big supermarket or drugstore chain today, this is all that you can buy. You certainly can't find this or this or perhaps even this or this anymore. They become obsolete in a while. People today going out to buy language courses are only going to find what is made and offered and presented as being the newest, the best, the most innovative, the most up-to-date, the most improved. And in point of fact, it's quite likely not to be. In point of fact, if you could find a language course that's the equivalent of something like this, and if you could learn the circumstances to use it, analogous to taking the shower first, and if you could learn the technique, that is, not to press hard versus pressing hard, well, you might just find that a language course like that, uh, the equivalent of that, would be better than what is offered today. I've made that point throughout that series uh, because of the historical confluence of circumstances that arose, say, in the late 1950s and in the early 1960s, when you had uh, a consciousness and a need of people to learn languages from around the world for the first time, combined with the true advance, the real advance in technology, being recorded materials being produced in the first time, together with this with comparative historical hindsight, uh, the dumbing down of the modern mind, the dumbing down of contemporary society being in very elementary stage compared to what it is today. I suppose in this video I'm really turning uh, the whole notion of uh, the idea of progress, to use the title of a famous book by the historiographer H. Uh, Burry, um, on its head. Uh, and I'm not at all implying that among the equivalent of language courses, things like this, there are some true innovations. There are some good new things out there that did not exist back when the equivalent of this is all there was. But it's worth a look. And it's worth taking pause, I think, and sitting back and saying, let me examine what I do. Because we are creatures of habit, as Plato said. And if we get into the wrong habit, the bad habit, we're not going to do very well. And if we reflect upon the things that we do most often, most commonly, there, when we make changes, is when we might come to the most productive results. So, there you have my parable of the razor. Um, if it helps you shave better, I'm happy. If it helps you study languages better, I'm even happier. And if there's any overall reflection, deeper philosophical reflection, that this might give you, uh, I'm happier still. Thank you for listening.